And welcome back. Well, our next guest won the Pulitzer Prize for their reporting on the medical narrative of a little two-year-old, Nick Volker. Yeah, Nick had a mysterious disease. His doctors took a radical long shot into the future of medicine to save his life. They did a complete, what they call gene sequencing. We are here now with journalists from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. We have Mark Johnson and Kathleen Gallagher. They chronicled the twist and the turn of events in this book, One in a Billion, the story of Nick Volker and the dawn of genomic medicine. So many big words in there. Thanks for being <laughs> Did I say all those words right? Good job. Yeah. Close. Nailed it. Okay. Um, how, first of all, how did you guys become a, a team and how did you find out about Nick? Well, we'd worked on um, a couple of other stories before, but uh, Kathleen got the, um, got the tip. So I went running over to Mark because he's a good <laughs> science writer. And, awesome. Uh, said, do you want to do this story? And he was what pretty What was excited. your type of writing but prior to this? I'm a business reporter. Business. Okay. So I have a lot of corporate sources and you know, mm -hmm. okay. a lot of tips. Talk a little bit about the challenges that doctors faced and what the story was behind Nick. Well, the main challenge was that uh, they didn't know what was, uh, what was causing his illness. And what kind of symptoms was he having? He had, uh, it, it was a really sort of cruel disease because he was very severely undernourished. Mm. He was way underweight, like in the third percentile. And yet when he'd eat, he would get holes in his intestines. Oh. And I mean, really bad holes. And eventually he, he lost part of his intestine. Uh, they actually had to m remove it. Mm -hmm. um, and so basically it, he was caught in this kind of catch-22. And they, they thought it looked like Crohn's disease, but Crohn's disease has um, treatments, and when yeah. they would try these with Nick, he wouldn't get better. Uh huh. Or like a celiac, people know that that can eat mm -hmm. up your intestines. Right. Same thing. They went through those. Right. And it turns out actually that um, I hadn't realized this, but a lot of patients um, go through what they call diagnostic odysseys. Mm -hmm. you, when we go to the doctors, we kind of expect that they're going to know what's wrong with us. Right. But about 30 million Americans have rare diseases, and about 30% of them uh, go through diagnostic odysseys of five years or more. In other words, it takes five years or longer. And let me tell you, it, you know, as a parent, you've got a child who's that sick, and you're going through what you call a diagnostic odyssey or hell for a parent. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I mean, you've got a child who's sick and, and a child that young who can't really communicate effectively about what's going on, I, I, you know, waiting and, and, and test results and, and guessing and treatments and things that don't work. So, so how did you decide, hey, this is a story that we're going to follow for a year, right? You kind of well, followed his story. It, w it was pretty obvious to us right away that this was something that um, if it had done before, been done before, it hadn't been done very often. So we knew when we, when we got the tip and we heard that they had sequenced all of his genes, we were pretty sure that was an unusual occurrence. What does that mean for a non-science person? Yeah, and is it ethical? Is yeah. there? It, it, it is ethical. Um, people have probably heard of the Human Genome mm -hmm. Project, and it's mm -hmm. kind of like our, our genes are sort of the blueprint for almost everything about us, from hair color and eye color to our likelihood of diseases. Sometimes uh, rare diseases come directly from genes. and. The genome is basically the entire blueprint, and it's spelled out in uh, ch chemical bases. Mm -hmm. There's 3.2 billion of them, and so it's a very, very long string. And each one of us has a completely different uh, genome, mm -hmm. although we're, we're very similar in a lot of ways. But um, sequencing actually gives you the exact readout. It, it's like... Um, so it's the, order, it's the order of the chemical bases. Right. So what they did is they went in and they... They figured out the order of chemicals, there are four of them, in his genome. And they figured out, actually, that one of those chemicals was different from any other person in the world. And, mm. and that in the world? In the world. In the world. And in fact, they looked at other uh, species, um, animals, and they couldn't find anybody, anything, that had this one particular sequence. It's a, most people have TGT. In this one very specific spot, he had TAT. He's giving you the abbreviations yeah. for the chemical so it's, names. Right. It's okay. kind of like a, you can Thank think of you. it as a typo. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like if you imagine the Encyclopedia Britannica, yeah. this is like one typo in the whole thing. So he's so, like one in a zillion. Wow. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one in six billion, right? So, so what yeah. do they do with that information? You get all this genome information, the DNA mm -hmm. sequencing. What do you do with it? You find the missing or the incorrect letter. Can you change that? Can you do something to alter it, fix it? That's a great question. And it depends whether they know what the specific gene that's affected, what it does. Mm -hmm. And in this case, at first, they weren't sure. And they were very lucky in a way because a paper uh, and it was published in another medical journal that uh, came up with the roles that this gene plays and found out that it plays an important role in diseases called inflammatory bowel diseases. Mm -hmm. So they figure this out. Uh, some of it, it sounds like the good fortune. Um, and then what? So, so they, they give him a certain kind of treatment. So then they gave him a, a transplant, a, mm -hmm. a um, cord blood transplant. Uh, not a cord blood. Uh, yeah, it was an umbilical cord. Umbilical blood cord trans transplant. And that... With like embryo, uh, embryo that or it, like what the they, DNA? What they did basically is they gave him a new immune system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And oh. so there's a really interesting fact. If he uh, committed a crime someday, which I don't think he would do, but if he did, um, if he left, his fingerprints would be his fingerprints. But if they found a sample of his hair, that would be his donor's DNA. Wow. Whoa. That's like its whoa, own whoa, whoa. CSI right oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now what? Because we're running out of time. So how is he now? What happened? Well, they were able to, they, they thought when they gave him the transplant, they knew that um, he actually had two, as it turned out, two very rare diseases, one of which was found on the sequencing. And they knew that the transplant would cure that disease. They didn't know what it would do as far as the intestinal disease. But in the years since then, he hasn't had any recurrence. How oh. old is he now? I, I want, he's 11 years old. I <gasps> talked to his mom last Aww. night. Look how sweet and, that uh, is. The his mom's mom so said, cute, too. Isn't she? she yeah. and, and his mom was really a fighter for him. She's a wonderful person. So she said they went hiking in the Smokies recently, and he was so agile, he almost gave her a few heart attacks. <laughs> um, he has other areas in which he's struggling. You can see in the pictures he still has the bag yeah. to collect his okay. waste. He also was diagnosed with some side effects, um, epilepsy mm. and PTSD, but mm. they're pretty happy he's alive. Yeah. yeah. You guys should write a book. <laughs> <laughs> That was funny. That was good. That's what Seriously, we yeah. I mean, I'd been a reporter for 30 years when uh, Kathleen came running up to me, and I told her afterwards that I felt like she'd said, hey, do you want a winning lottery ticket? Yeah. You know, it was like that. That is awesome. Phenomenal. People Ooh, can meet you. Incredible. They can get the book signed and get more on the book as well. This Saturday, right, at 2 o'clock, you'll be at Discovery World. That's going on um, on Saturday. And then Thursday, the 26th of May, at 7 o'clock, you'll be at Boswell Book Company. It's one in a billion. I can't a imagine story. a better place for you guys to answer questions and do a book signing than Discovery World. Yeah. I think yeah. that, and well, Boswell Book Company. But that is awesome. Well, Discovery World, right? Right now has a big genome exhibit going on, so Very people cool. can go to the exhibit. Too. That is cool. Congratulations, yeah. you guys. Thank Blast you. Thank you so you. much Thank for you. having Thank us. You. Yeah, appreciate mm -hmm. it.